Got to prep your head. All right. Make sure all the knowledge is at the top. What is up, Rad Potential YouTube, and welcome to the first Rad Formational video in a long while. If you're new to the channel, every now and again, we have Rad Formational videos where I get to teach you guys stuff about rad things. So, today, as you just saw, we are going to talk about the forces in your drivetrain, okay, from a very high level, so you understand what's happening when you're flooring it, okay, and how the power is getting put to the ground and how the car reacts. And then we're also going to talk about the importance of those forces with regard to keeping your rotary engine held together at high horsepower. Okay, so first things first, we're going to start out with the general gist of what forces are and what forces mean and your your basic, basic level engineering here, okay? So, thank you to Newton's Laws of Motion, Newton's Laws of Forces, the same deal. The sum of all the forces in a system have to be zero. So, what I've drawn over here is your car, okay? The blue box is the car, the red lines are your drivetrain, the blue circles are your wheels, obviously. And we're going to talk through these forces, okay? So when you floor it in your car, the engine makes power, right? The engine spins the drive shaft a certain direction. The drive shaft then turns the rear axle a certain direction, which drives your tires, which force or which interacts with the ground, forces the ground, right, to go out from underneath you, okay? So, I've labeled the directions of all these forces with their respective colors and arrows. So you can see the engine here is turning clockwise from the front of the car. The wheels are turning clockwise from the side of the car, which means that the ground is going to react in the opposite way, and the weight of your car is going to react in the opposite way of your engine. Okay, so we're going to use Mr. Shelby Mustang over here as a model. So when you floor it and you feel your car take off and it's going to go, the wheel is going to turn, the car is going to go forward, right? What's also going to happen is you're going to feel your car, if you have soft suspension, is going to load up like this, okay? It's going to put all its weight back into this tire right and the reason that that happens is because the engines gonna twist the car is gonna react against it the ground is gonna twist the ground is gonna react against it which is gonna cause the left front of your car to get light now if you've watched a lot of drag racing you're gonna see that some of the weaker chassis cars like for example a stock S10, okay? The stock S10 will go real fast on the stock frame rails with a straight axle, etc., etc. And you're going to see that truck pull that driver's side wheel real high off the ground, but the passenger side wheel won't be as high. And that's because the engine is picking that side of the car up and it takes that extra two feet of gravity doing a wheelie to balance out the force of the engine. Or you pull a sky high moon wheelie and you flip your truck over because the engine made too much force, it's too much traction, and your truck couldn't outweigh it. So that's the gist of the overview of your car, okay? Keep in mind, right, that those forces are going to cause flexure within your car. If your car isn't a full 10 point cage reinforced frame, your car is going to bend. As much as you don't think it's true, it's going to bend. The next bit, we're going to look a little more closely at the engine and the rear end, okay? I'm going to use a straight axle as my example because it's a little bit easier to visualize. Um, if you have an IRS car, the forces are going to be the same. You're just going to see the forces happening on the diff, which is then going to be transferred to the car, which will then be transferred into the rear suspension versus the diff itself actually moving and interacting, okay? So, right here we have a blow up of your engine. These two circles 
are your engine mounts, okay? Which we're going to consider them as pins. So those are locked to your car. So when you punch it, the engine's going to rotate. The car is going to rotate back. The transmission's going to rotate. The car is going to rotate back. That's going to hold the engine still. We go down the drive shaft, that's going to rotate. What that's going to do is change the direction of the rotation in order to propel your car forward. So we're rotating this way here. We come in here, the ring and pinion happens. We go 90 degrees. So we're going to go up to this picture. Same rotation here on your pinion is going to cause the rear axle to turn the wheels down. Now, this rotation of the pinion still needs to get counteracted somewhere. You're still going to have a force when you meet the friction resistance here that's going to try to twist the rear end right along the drive shaft's axis in your car. So that's why you'll see some straight axle cars, like I said, when they do the wheelie, are going to stand that rear end up in different ways. Okay, that's also why you're going to see in straight axle cars, big, heavy, fast drag cars, that they put rear steer in the car, i.e. they cant the rear end in a direction such that when that force occurs, twisting the rear end, it twists the rear end straight, which then allows the car to go straight. Okay, so the rear steer is counteracting that force. Now... Moving to why your engine mounts are important here, okay? And this is kind of the purpose of me making this video is to walk through this part with you guys so you guys kind of understand this. If you want to upgrade the engine mounts in your car, okay? So you want to go to poly engine mounts or you want to go to solid mounts or you want to go to all sorts of stuff like that. We are getting attacked by a giant bug. Look at this unit. It's like some Australia bugs. Okay, anyways, back to what we were doing. Squirrel. So, you want to switch to a different style of engine mount. If you install, say, stiffer engine mounts, but you leave your transmission stock mounted, what do you think is going to happen at the interface between the engine and transmission. Okay, so the engine is now going to try to turn into that engine mount, right? And it's going to be met with a stiffer mount. And that stiffer mount is going to transmit that force into the car. So this engine isn't going to have as much deflection as the transmission, which now has a softer mount than the engine does. So when the engine and transmission turn as a unit, the transmission is allowed to have more deflection. What that's going to cause, we're going to go over here, the transmission on the engine. So when forces happen in your engine, the engine is going to try to twist up this way. Okay, It's going to pick up the driver's side mount and try to flip the engine over that way. You'll see on my rally car that there's a chain in the engine bay. In case you break the engine mount, it holds the side of the engine down. Holds this to the frame. So when you floor it now, and this engine has those solid mounts, and it tries to lift this side up, and it can't move at all, right? The engine is fixed to the car, okay? We're assuming you don't have enough power. The car is not going to flex at all. We're just going to look at it from that perspective for right now. So the engine's not going to move. Your transmission now, with this solid, dinky rubber mount, you can see right here, also the little rubber bushings that hold your mount to the car, is going to be allowed to twist, right? And it's going to twist more than normal. Okay, so this transmission now is going to try to, if I can do this by hand, slide this back. Anyways, this is going to try to rotate over. Okay, and on the back of a rotary engine, there's only two dowels that hold your rotary engine together. Okay, one is right here, the other one is down here. So if you can imagine this transmission is allowed to flex and roll over, it's going to effectively move the input shaft this direction which is going to put a whole lot of force into this bolt which is then going to crack your rear iron right here okay and you're going to break that and you're going to have a leak the second scenario we'll look at if this is mounted solid and this is mounted solid when you punch it 
all the forces of rotation should equal out in the mounts. You shouldn't have any more deflection in the transmission or the engine, which means that the force in this dowel is going to be less. So to show that over here, with this piece being solid, this piece being solid, there will not be any forces in this section here. When you allow this side to have more movement side to side, and this side has barely any movement side to side, you're going to get a deflection along this axis which is what's going to cause this to break. Okay. So, I kind of wanted to take some time to walk you guys through that because I personally think that it's very important to match the density of your engine mounts. Um, I've heard as well, and this will be the next section here, and I, it's not that I disagree, but I don't think that it's as important as uh, the engine mount thing. So, say you have a fully super rigid car okay so your car like my yellow rally car has a 10 point cage it's super stiff the car is not going to move around a lot whenever you rip it and it does a wheelie the whole car is going to move up in a sense that it's not going to create any torsion in the car so if you have a super stiff car imagine there's no deflection through your chassis when you floor it and do a wheelie, it's just going to do a wheelie, right? Because the engine can't move, the car can't bend, and the ground it stays flat. No matter how much horsepower you think you have, trust me, you're not turning the earth. Although I wish I could turn the earth. I'm going to say I'm turning the earth. But anyways, so the car is not going to have any deflection. The engine is not going to have any deflection. Thus, you're not worried about having any sort of weird torsion stuff happen between your engine and transmission, right? So in a fully built drag car, everything is rigid. Now, if your car is that stiff, then it might be better to run somewhat of a different density of engine mount in order to allow for some deflection at high power, right? But I still think that if the engine mounts are different, especially in a rotary, because rotary engines don't have any structure to resist rotation, right, that you're going to want the engine mounts to, to match. I still think that's super important, even if your car is super stiff. And if your car flexes a bunch, right, so this is the, the other side of the argument, I guess, what I was trying to get out there. If your car does flex a lot, right, and you solid mount your engine, now you're going to be creating essentially a reinforcement beam with your engine and transmission to your car, right? So your engine and transmission are going to try to hold the car straight instead of the car moving in the solid engine mounts or like a stiff car not able to bend the engine. And so you're going to introduce more torsion into the engine inherently, right? Because you've loosened the car up and stiffened the engine. And at that point, I would agree with, I mean, and even then, I still wouldn't agree with mixing your mounts. I would just want to run a softer mount in that case. Um, but I would agree with that if you have a soft car and a stiff mounted engine, you can break your engine, regardless if the mounts match or not, right? Because now you've introduced a whole lot more force here because the car is moving around the engine. This now becomes the weak line again, and you break your dowel landing. So, that's my two cent breakdown on your, uh, on your engine thing. I don't think that there's any horsepower level that uh, necessarily just breaks your engine all the time. I know that uh, you can probably make 500 horsepower and not break stuff if you're easy on it. I know that if you're making 300 horsepower and you're clutch kicking and drifting and beating the heck out of your car and you have washed out engine mounts and everything's moving and everything's flopping side to side that you're probably going to break your engine because at some point something's going to load up and tweak it and break it and it's going to it's going to happen right same thing you need in an fc you need a diff snubber because the diff 
is going to try to flip up, right? If the tires are going this way, it's going to try to flip the diff up and do a wheelie. And if your car and your mounts and everything aren't stiff enough to just do a wheelie with the car, then it's just going to break the diff off under the car. So, a few things to think about. I hope that clears stuff up for you guys because um, I've answered that question a lot and I've got a lot of different people talking about it and I wanted to kind of visualize what I'm thinking um, so that you guys can can learn something because that's what we're here for. Rad formation, teaching you guys cool stuff about cars. So, if you have any questions, 100% comment below. I want to know your guys' thoughts. If I'm wrong, comment below. Tell me why I'm wrong because I want to know, right? Because if I put cars together like this idea and all my stuff starts breaking, then obviously I'm doing something wrong. So we need to figure that out. But we warmed the head up before we started the video, got all the scratches going, got the knowledge to the top, and I think I think we got this. This, this makes sense to me. And I think this is how everything's working. So with that, guys, thank you guys very much for watching. Drop a like on the video if you thought it was good. If you're interested in learning more radformational information, definitely hit that subscribe button. We're trying to grow this channel, cranking everything up. I appreciate all the support, all the comments, all the builds. The Sniper build series is going well. The RX-8 is going to come back up here in a week when I get done with the Sniper. You guys see this video. We're getting back on the rally car this week. So I cleaned the shop in preparation for bringing the rally car in here for some finishing touches. So... Thank you guys for tuning in. We'll see you in the next one. Keep it red.